Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about walking between chords. And what I mean by that is if we are playing a chord progression, however you're playing it over here, I'm gonna be kind of strumming for this lesson, then how do we walk between chords with single notes, kind of like our own little bass line that we can connect chords with? This can bring a very basic chord progression to life in a really fun way. And there are so many creative options for how to do this and make your own sound with it. There's not one prescriptive way. So I really wanna show you this because um, I think it's a really Really fun way to spice up our chord progressions. Let's dive right in. The progression we're going to use is C major for two measures, and then A minor for two measures, and then D minor for two measures, and then G major or G7 for two measures. So one, two, three, four, 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 and then back. Okay? So Whenever I want to, to get something down, I wanna find some kind of way to do it a little bit systematically if I can, if that is even possible. So what I'm gonna suggest here is that we take each of these counts, and it's nice we're doing this example with two measures each on purpose so we have a lot of room to walk to another chord. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna say, well, can we walk to each chord in a variety of ways? Can we walk with a bass note? So for example, Bum, bum, bum. That's a very basic example of what we're going to work on here. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. That kind of thing. But okay, how do we work on more than just some version we came up with once? And how do we think of really acknowledging all the varieties that we can work with here? So we have eight beats, eight beats, two measures of each chord. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. What I want to do is I want to walk with a single preceding note to every chord from above and from below. So these are variations that we can have. Okay, we're going to have one walking note that's preceding a chord. We're going to do it from a approaching each chord from above. We're going to do it approaching each chord from below. And we're going to do it with our scale, within the diatonic scale, which is C major. And we're going to also let ourselves do it outside of the scale. So the the options already are just insane. We're not gonna cover all the options. I'm just gonna loosely go over how you can start to perceive um, the, just your creative um, palette here that you can work off of. So make sure you know what the scale is with the kind of the bottom two strings, especially that you're in. So here's one, seven, six, five, four, three. I have a chord theory series that covers all that kind of stuff, how to count with the scale and everything like that. So check out that series if you need to learn about how to count in the scale and find chord tones on the guitar. Great lesson series, link in the description. One, seven, six, five, four, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. So we need to be able to see and know those things. You, you actually can get away without doing that because we're gonna go outside of that key too. But for what I'm gonna propose as one of our steps, I want you to know that because I want us to choose notes that are in the scale on purpose and then choose notes that are outside of the scale on purpose. Okay, now that we know our scale, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take each before each chord, one beat before each chord. So on beat four, before the chord changes, I'm going to choose one note that is above every chord. And it's the note that is above every chord within the scale. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so that's the note in the scale above A minor. Now on, we're on A minor. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the note above D. Three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom. Okay, so it already sounds quite nice and it's so simple, it's our first step. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom, two, four, one, two, three, boom, boom, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom, two, one, two, three, boom, boom, back to C. Okay, now let's do that from below. So every note within the scale below. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom. Going to A minor, and you can just go to boom, open A minor. Four, one, two, three, boom, boom, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom. Okay, so I love doing this because it just puts out in this kind of, we don't even have to flex our creative muscles yet. We can just say, whoa, look at all these options. And then we can choose by taste and make insane combinations of these things once we have all these options. So that's already a lot. Now let's stick with still one note and do it chromatically. So we're gonna choose the note that is a half step above or below the chord instead of a whole step. Um, so we're allowed to go outside of the key now. So it's gonna sound funky in some places, but very cool in some places. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
It actually works surprisingly well. Let's do the same thing from the bottom. This is especially gonna work, approaching any chord from below by a half step. Two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom. Now that's in the key, but we're still just choosing to do a half step. Okay, let's move on and do two notes now. So what if we choose two notes? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On the three, four beat leading to each chord, we're going to come from above two scale notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now that one might sound the same, but they don't all sound the same. That one does because this is the root of the chord we were on. It sounds like the last time, but check it out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Ah, now it's different. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, very cool. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. Notice how we're breaking it down in this way where we know exactly what we're doing and why. We're creating practice options for ourselves. We are, and, and of course, that's very prescriptive to go three above each one. It sounds quite good. I would totally use that in real music, but realistically, we're gonna pick and choose whatever combination of all these things that feels good to us. So now let's go to play two notes within the scale from below each chord. Okay, so our first chord is A minor that we're going to. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now, some of these are just gonna sound funky. This F is not inside the C chord, so it kinda sounds like a weird note to jump to to then precede this A minor, but we're still just practicing it as one of our walking options. So from A minor, two, three, four, one, two. There's that D minor, two notes up to it, and now boom, boom, boom. I like that one a lot. This is a very basic one from G to C. Boom, boom. Okay, see where we're going with this? Now let's try to come from above and add a chromatic note. Still, we're just on three, four, beats three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, da, da, da. Oh, cool. So we're still just picking up that same amount of space, but we're letting ourselves play these notes outside of the scale. If we do the same thing from below, same idea. Boom, boom, boom. Or Already, this is so many options. Now you can choose one for one chord progression or one chord change, a different one going to a different chord change, coming from below, coming from above, sticking with the scale, adding a chromatic note, all over the place anytime. You could get used to all of these so much so that you just do them on the fly. Also, if you like this sound a lot and you end up doing it a lot. So let's go ahead and add three notes. One, two, we're gonna do three scale notes leading into each chord. One, two, three. So we have to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On two, three, four of the measure before the chord change, we're gonna find three notes up the scale. So for example, uh, two, three, four, boom, to A minor. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, boom. All of these just get a whole different flavor all of a sudden. Sounds so cool. So. You get the idea. I don't have to show you all the variations. Now you could do four from below within the scale. You can do five from above um, where you go one, two, three, four, one, two. You could do four notes. Uh, I shouldn't say five. You have four notes from above. The reason I said five actually is because um, one, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. I actually think of it as going five, four, three, two, one from the five of each chord. So that's just a little um, slip of how I was talking about it, but it's kind of cool because it shows that I was thinking of, oh, we're going to the five of each chord and then counting down. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one of A minor. And then five, four, three, two, one of D minor. That obviously maybe feels like a bit much to do, but again, it's just for all the practice, right? So the last thing I want to say, because again, I don't need to demonstrate all of them. You could do 
you could do four notes from below, you can start to add chromatic notes wherever you want. But the big thing I do wanna show you is you start to mix all these together, do it with any key, anywhere, just do that process where you do one note at a time first, then two, then three notes, and different directions, adding chromatic notes. But then of course you want to do a version where you're not just going one direction. So you might go, like we're going towards A minor. But then, so you start going from above and then you come from behind. That's a really cool way. Um, in jazz improvisation, something very akin to this is often referred to as enclosures, where you're kind of closing in on a note. We're closing in on A before we play A. A true enclosure would do. Notice how jazz that sounds. Because we played every note, three notes above it chromatically, two notes behind it, chromatically. So that's, it's interesting doing this, you know, potentially singer songwriter kind of uh, style in the moment here, but all music is so connected and so similar. It, like styles are so much more similar than they are different. It just often is like rhythmic feel and some slight chromatics or something like that, that will change uh, drastically what we think of as style. Do, 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 do. <laughs> that sounds like, that literally is a jazz lick and we're almost there by going in a style that doesn't sound jazz at all. So that's why I talk about so much variety of music on this channel, because I don't really feel married to any one um, genre, because I just am excited about how it all works in very similar ways. So changing directions. So you might go. That's a cool one. Or to get to D. A coming from below D, and then instead of playing this chromatic note, da, 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 you can go, bum, 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 go to one above. Okay, so just pointing that principle out the, that the possibilities really feel um, very, very vast. And I hope you're exci as excited as I clearly am when talking about this, because it's just so fun to take something that feels um, possible, but maybe a little daunting, but like break it down in into a system, right? And that makes it so approachable when we did it that way. We're like, just take one note on four, which direction in the scale, now a chromatic note, now two notes, same thing, now three notes, same thing. And then all those possibilities come out. So I hope you will have fun with that. If you're someone that likes to write chord progressions, or if you're playing a covers, you want to make them uh, your own and, and make different arrangements and you're finding different voicings on the, even just normal voicings. You don't need to find different voicings, but normal chord voicings with this is, can make whatever chord progression you're playing. Um, something, you know, might be, you might be playing it in a way that no one has, else has ever played it by adding ver varieties of those types of walking between the chords. If you do want some more chord options, I have a really amazing chord chart called Chords with Color that actually starts with all the basic chords through five different keys, but then shows chord shapes for adding every type of extension, which is like add nine or sus two or sus four and um, all, uh, elevens and um, everything that you can change to create color in the chord, as it's called, and extensions in the chords. Um, it's a very organized, very cool chord chart. And you can get that totally for free with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color to download that chord chart. I know I was strumming with a pick here, but if you're someone who plays with your fingers, what I recommend watching next is my finger picking level two video, because this is kind of level two stuff. This is not beginner, totally basic. This is like, what do you do after you learn some chords and, and you're strumming? Well, this is a level two thing to add those walking uh, walking between the chords in there like we talked about right here. Well, my level two finger picking video is like, what do you do after you learn a couple finger picking patterns? I have a video about the basic finger picking patterns and this is, what do you do after that? It's a very cool video. If that's up your alley, I will put a link to it right on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube and there's a link in the description if you wanna to get to it from there instead. I post a new lesson video every week in next week's lesson, I'm gonna break down the top Top guitar strumming patterns. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.